morning, Neo Swedenborgians. Let me introduce you to the Galactic Mother. So my friend Jeff, regular viewer, Jeff, one of my regular viewers, often suggests I turn this into a religion so we can get tax-free status. And my response is, uh, this can't be a religion because it is not faith-based, first of all. And second of all, I don't want tax-free status because I want to um, sell stuff. And I, and I want to make a bumper sticker that says, Neo-Swedenborgianism, we pay taxes. So I want this to be a tax-paying enterprise. But I say that because if I were to start a religion, the religion would be the Church of the Galactic Mother. Now, anyone who knows the history of Western civilization can tell you that Galileo, discovering that the Earth was not the center of the universe, in a way, sparked the Enlightenment because this idea just blew everybody's minds that the, the earth revolved around the sun um, just like as Galileo saw it the moons were around Jupiter that was that was really a big idea and it changed the entire world and now we we have a new big huge idea and it's even a much bigger idea and the world is changing and uh, the idea is that we are in a galaxy and it is one galaxy among who knows how many a universe full of galaxies so the universe within the last 150 years has just expanded exponentially and so now we're we're moving away from God the Father and we are moving towards the Galactic Mother oh <laughs> look I almost dropped my phone right off my own porch we're moving into the world of the Galactic Mother because the Milky Way from afar has a purple tinge similar to the way that the uh, uh, the Andromeda Galaxy has kind of a reddish hue, a pinkish, orangish, reddish hue. Uh, the Milky Way Galaxy has a purple hue. So the Milky Way Galaxy, as some people know, has a big, huge black hole at the very center of it. And uh, that is uh, the makeup of the Galactic Mother. And as you see by the face of this little doll, the Galactic Mother is quite young. So, should I end right there? Or should I invite you to tea? Because that's all new, all that Galactic Mother stuff. I haven't spoken about that before. But uh, if that's intriguing to you, let me tell you what's old. the globe of the earth. The earth is approximately 8,000 miles in diameter. It really looks like I'm trying to drop this phone off the porch, doesn't it? <laughs> so let's not drop the phone off the porch. Let's, where should we put it? Uh -huh. Before I say this, let me also say that I'm in Chicago, as many of you know. Chicago was designed by a guy named Daniel Burnham. Daniel Burnham was raised a Swedenborgian, and so Chicago was somewhat designed with inspiration from Swedenborg's descriptions of heaven. So if you haven't heard of Swedenborg, it's not my fault. So anyway, the Earth is 8,000 miles in diameter, approximately. According to this book, Spirit Intercourse by J. Hewitt McKenzie, 
The heavens are the same dimensions as the Van Allen belts. The heavens are the Van Allen belts. So the Earth is about 8,000 miles in diameter. The Van Allen belts extend about um, 36,000 miles beyond Earth. So if this is one diameter, it's 8,000. 16, 24, 32, 36. So 36,000 miles beyond Earth is off the back porch. But where we go when we die, we don't go straight out to the seventh heaven. We have to get there. We go into one of the first three heavens, and that is under 2,000 miles above the surface of the Earth. So here's 8,000 miles. Right, one diameter, so that's 4,000 miles. Here's 2,000 miles, and here's less than 2,000 miles. So there's about 2,000 miles above Earth. So what we're saying, Neo-Swedenborgianistically, speaking Neo-Swedenborgianistically, you go into the sky when you die. You go into your spirit home, wherever that may be, up in the sky. And so I'm in Chicago, so Presumably, if I were to die, I would go into the Chicago spirit world. So I would move from the surface of the Earth up, up about, let's say, a thousand miles above Earth. Right? So if you're wondering where somebody who is dead is, um, I don't have the specific answer for where they are, but I have the, the news that there is an answer. Right? So let's say you want to know, here I am in Chicago, where is somebody dead? Where is Abe Lincoln? Well, I'm in Chicago, that's west. Um, let's say Abe Lincoln might be above Springfield, so Springfield is that way. So Abe Lincoln is somewhere above Springfield, or unless maybe he's off traveling somewhere in the universe, who knows? But the point is, is that Speaking neo Swedenborgianistically, this earth life is the beginning of a universal life. When you go from the surface of the earth up into some spirit world that suits you, and you develop and grow like a tree, and you go from the second or third level of the spirit world to the fourth, to the fifth, ultimately to the seventh heaven, which is the top of the spirit world, which is represented as 36,000 miles above Earth, which is the outer edge of the uh, Van Allen belt. And from there, uh, you can travel the galaxy and even travel the universe because all the other planets have this similar arrangement with a terrestrial life and a spirit world life. And just like all the other planets have their own magnetic fields around them, so other planets have Van Allen belt type structures, is what science is literally telling us. J. Hewitt McKenzie told us in 1916 that all the other planets have their own spirit worlds around them. And he gave us maps and numbers. And anyway, thanks for listening. We did not drop the tea off the porch. Congratulations. I mean, we did not drop the phone off the porch. It's not too late.